Right, ready for looking for trouble, part two. Let's see what happens. Oh, we'll have a good chat at the end. He walked softly, casually down the corridor, heading back for the last block. A murmur of voices reached him, and he quickly stepped into an alcove, squatting down beside a drinking fountain as two men and a woman walked past, all wearing white coats, arguing about web servers. Overhead, he noticed a security camera swivel towards him. In another five seconds, it would be on him. But he still had to wait until the three technicians had gone before he could sprint forward, just ahead of the wide-angle lens. Had it seen him? Alex couldn't be sure, but he did know one thing. He was running out of time. Maybe the vole woman would have checked up on him already. Maybe someone would have brought lunch to the empty room. If he was going to find anything, it would have to be soon. He started along the glass passage that joined block C and D, and here at last, there was something different. The corridor was split in half, with a metal staircase leading down into what must have been some sort of basement. It's always the basement, always. And although every building and every door he had seen so far had been labelled, this staircase was blank. The light stopped about halfway down. It was almost as if the stairs were trying not to get themselves noticed. Beautiful language. Thank you, um, Anthony Horowitz. And I do know you're the author, I just keep forgetting your name. The clang of feet on metal. Alex shrank back and a moment later, Mr. Green appeared, rising out of the floor like a vampire on a bad day. As the sun hit his head, I, as the sun hit his dead white face, his scars twitched and he blinked several times before walking off into block D. What had been going on? Where did the stairs go? Alex hurried down them. It was like stepping into a morgue. The air conditioning was so strong that he could feel it on his forehead and on the palms of his hand, fast freezing his sweat. He stopped at the bottom of the stairs. He was in another long passageway, stretching back under the complex the way he had come. It led to a single metal door. There was something very strange. The walls of the passage were unfinished. Dark brown rock with streaks of what looked like zinc or some other metal. The floor was also rough and the way was lit by old fashioned bulbs hanging on wires. It all reminded him of something, something he had seen very recently, but he couldn't remember what. Ooh, I wonder what that is. I can't think of that either. Somehow, Alex knew that the door at the end of the passage would be locked. It looked as if it had been locked forever. Like the stairs, it was not labelled. And somehow, it seemed too small to be important. But Mr Grin had just come up the stairs. There was only one place he could have come from, and that was the other side. The door had to lead somewhere. He reached it and tried the handle. It wouldn't move. He pressed his ear against the metal and listened. Nothing. Unless, was he imagining it? A sort of throbbing. A pump or something like it. Alex would have given anything to see through the metal. And suddenly he realised he could. The Nintendo was in his pocket. He took it out, inserted the Exocet cartridge, turned it on and held it flat against the door. Oh! The top screen flickered into life. A tiny window through the metal door. Alex was looking into a large room. There was something tall and barrel shaped in the middle of it. And there were people. Ghosts like mere smudges on the screen. They were moving back and forth. Some of them were carrying objects. Flat and rectangular. Trays of some sort. There seemed to be a desk to one side. Piled with apparatus that he couldn't make out. Alex pressed the B button, trying to zoom in, but the room was too big. Everything was too far away. He fumbled in his po pocket and took out the earphones, still holding the Nintendo against the door. He pressed the wire into the socket and slipped the earphones over his head. If he couldn't see, at least he might be able to hear. And sure enough, the voices came through, faint and disconnected, but audible through the powerful speaker system built into the machine. In place, we have 24 hours. It's not enough. It's all we have. They come in tonight at 0200 hours. Alex didn't recognise any of the voices. 
amplified by the tiny machine. They sounded like a phone call from abroad on a very bad line. Grin, overseeing the delivery. It's still not enough time. And then they were gone. Alex tried to piece together what he had heard. <gasps> Sorry, I read on, I read on, I'm naughty. Something was bearing, being delivered. Two hours after midnight, Mr. Grin was arranging the delivery. But what 